Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. And in today's video, we're gonna show you how to figure out why your radio won't turn on. Let's get started. As we jump into things, have you ever been in the situation where you turn on the car and nothing happens? And you just don't know why it was working maybe at one point and it just stopped working altogether. Well, in this video, what we're gonna do is show you how to look at different areas in the vehicle to determine where the issue may be. It could be a fuse, it could be a wiring issue, or finally, it could be just, frankly, bad equipment. So in this video, we're gonna go through each of those three steps to kind of help isolate and determine where the issue is in your install. So today we're working on this 2005 Forerunner and actually it has pretty decent equipment installed. It looks like this, yeah, Kenwood HDMI navigation radio. Now, before we have to tear everything apart, let's go ahead and jump to the fuse box and look to see if we happen to have a blown fuse. Now your fuse box in your vehicle could vary based on the manufacturer, your make and model. Um, so you want to do a little bit of research to determine where it's at. In our vehicle here today, it happens to be on the left side of the steering column behind this little panel. You can actually pull this on out and we'll take a look in there. Now we'll have to identify which fuse does what. A lot of the time when you flip this on over, it does give you a diagram. If you don't have something like this on the back of your fuse cover, most likely it's gonna be in your owner's manual. If you don't have an owner's manual, you're gonna to have to put Google to work for you. So as we take a look here, we're looking at all our fuses. Generally, we're looking for one that says radio or something of the sort, maybe audio system, maybe amplifier, something like that. Now looking through this, it doesn't look like we necessarily have anything there that matches that description. And so we may have to jump to the other fuse box up underneath the hood to check that location as well. So here under the hood, we want to look around for that fuse box. In most cases, it's probably pretty close to the battery. So if you can locate the battery, you'll probably find the fuse box next to it. Ours is, happens to be the case and located right here. So let's go ahead and get this open here. Now, same kind of situation. If you flip this on over, you will probably have some sort of fuse diagram or at least fuse numbers and you may have to again resort to the owner's manual but for us we're going to look for a radio fuse so as we take a closer look here we happen to identify radio number one which probably implies there's multiple fuses for the radio so we got a 20 amp here on radio number one then we also happen to identify radio number two down here in the corner as well so that tells us there's two radio fuses one's probably a constant 12 volts that is what we call a memory wire or the yellow wire on the aftermarket radio and one's probably an accessory which is only on when the key is on hence why there's probably two different ones as they're on their own separate circuit so let's go ahead jump in to see if one of these two are bad so what we'll do is we'll position this fuse box to help mirror the layout of our fuse box itself here so it looks like based on this orientation that it, it's not this way but it's certainly this way. And so we're gonna look for number 20 here, and it happens to correspond with this 20 right here. They're gonna look for this 20 here, which happens to correspond with the 20 down here as well. Now the vehicle is currently off, obviously nothing is running. And if you're worried about pulling fuses, it's always good to remove the negative off the battery for protection. So with this fuse on out, it actually looks pretty good. And the way that we can test this fuse is we'll head over to the bench and show you the way using a multimeter to test if the continuity between this pole and this pole is connected. So here at the bench, we have our multimeter and the fuse that we're looking to test. Now, obviously looking at the fuse, it does look good. If we're looking at it, we can see that little loop in there and it's not broken. However, that's still not sometimes 100% confirmed that the fuse is good. So we're gonna test it with our multimeter. This multimeter we have is just from our local auto parts store. You can also certainly pick one up online and we can link one in the description here for you. But we're gonna go ahead and set this to our continuity tester. And it's the one with the dot and the three lines here. And the way that we know that certainly what we need is if we put this together, we can hear the noise of the beep. 
So if we touch both poles, we want to hear that beep to confirm that the fuse is good. So we know that the fuse is good. So this fuse that we pulled isn't our culprit. Let's go ahead and reinstall it and check the other one. So our fuses are good, or at least the fuses that are marked radio in our fuse box turn out to be just fine. So we can reinstall this one. And at this point of time, most likely what we're gonna have to do is pull the radio. All right, so we're here in the car and at this point of time with pulling the fuses out and reinstalling them. A lot of the time that does power cycle the radio and that could be an easy, simple fix for your radio in this circumstance. So before we tear it apart, let's double check. So unfortunately, it's still not working. So at this point of time, let's go ahead and get this pulled apart. Now, obviously this is not gonna be a radio install or uninstall video. We have one of this generation foreigner already on the channel. So we'll link that video down in the description. At this point of time, we're gonna just do a quick time-lapse. Okay, so we got everything torn apart here. Um, and uh, we actually totally disconnected the radio because what we want to check at this point to ensure that the radio is indeed up to the point of the radio harness, the main power harness, if it's getting constant 12 volts or power from the battery, if it's getting an accessory wire or basically 12 volts when you turn on the key, um, and we want to ensure that the ground is good and um, that there's no issue with our ground. So what we're gonna do at this point is grab our multimeter here, but essentially this is gonna tell us exactly what we need to know. Now it's gonna help us check for 12 volts on our power wires, accessory wire, and it's also gonna help us validate that our ground is indeed good. So we're gonna go ahead and get this pulled apart. We're gonna switch it to the V with the line and the three dots underneath. Um, it's our DC voltage. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find bare metal within the vehicle here that we know is a good grounding location. And then what we're gonna do first and foremost is check for 12 volts. Now the key doesn't have to be on or off. It doesn't matter at this point. We're just testing to see if we have 12 volts um, on our yellow wire. So we're gonna look for our yellow wire in our harness. And we're, we can either probe here, we can probe at our harness connector, um, or we can probe anywhere along that line. What we're gonna do is probe all the way at the radio. So we're gonna grab back behind the harness, we're gonna probe. Okay, so we probed here, and we can see we got 12 volts, uh, which is uh, most likely what the battery is gonna be reading. So we know that at our radio on our yellow wire or aftermarket constant 12 volt wire, that's on all the time, we have continuity there, we're good, we got 12 volts. The next thing we need to check is the red wire. Now our red wire is gonna be accessory. It's only gonna be on when the key is on. So we're gonna probe in there as well. And put the key in the ignition. Cycle it over to power. And we can see we got 12 volts, which we know that it's getting an accessory source or ignition source when the key is on. When we turn off the, turn off the vehicle, it goes away and it goes back to millivolts. Basically, it's nothing. So we know that we're getting accessory power on a red wire. So last thing we need to check is to make sure our ground or the black wire here, our ground is good. We need to ensure that the ground is uh, doesn't have a lot of resistance on it. Uh, we wanna make sure our connection is good. And the way that we can do that is we can first easily check by the same feature we used on the bench when testing the fuses. We can check the ohm load, OL there, or we can do the continuity tester as well with the dot and the three lines to see if this is indeed reading a ground. Okay, we are certainly getting a ground here. You can hear it, so we know that that wire is indeed grounded. So we know our issue isn't the ground. So because we have now verified that we both have constant switch power and a solid ground, 
what we need to do is now look a little bit closer at our radio. So at this point of time, we're gonna head over to the bench and we're gonna get our radio set up to take a little bit closer look to see if we can identify if the issue is indeed with our equipment. Now, one additional thing that we can check to see if it's the culprit of why the radio is not turning on, your radio may have an onboard fuse to protect its own internal electrical components. And in most circumstances, it's gonna be right by the power plug insert. Now, it could also be on the harness itself, kinda of like an Alpine, it kinda of depends on your brand of radio. Our happens to be a 10 amp fuse right there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that as well. And we're gonna take a look. We're gonna also use the same technique and test it with the multimeter. Now looking really closely here, it does actually look totally intact. We'll verify that with our multimeter. And sure enough, it is good. So we know it's not the fuse. Let's go ahead and actually get this thing hooked up here at the bench to isolate and remove the variable that the issue is with the vehicle and instead focus directly here on the radio. If we can get the radio to boot up on the bench, then we know it's the vehicle. If the radio doesn't boot up here on the bench, the issue is indeed with the radio itself. All right, so we have our radio all wired up here. We have power ground and accessory running off our test bench here. So we have a power supply, um, a battery bank, as well as some terminals that we can hook our audio equipment up to. Now, the nice thing is this is gonna completely remove the variable of the vehicle to know if the issue is indeed the radio or not. So let's go ahead and get this thing booted up to see if it turns on. All right, so we're imitating turning the key on in the vehicle. Look at that, the light does turn on. So we know that the unit is actually getting power and turning on as if it were um, hooked up in the vehicle, but yet no screen, totally black so far. Nothing's responding. I do hear the fans operating on the back of the radio. So we know the unit is fully getting power, but yet no screen, nothing's happening so far. Let's just give it a minute, see what happens. Still nothing. Oh, okay, take a look at that. It just powered off itself. Um, the light went off, it's totally off now. Now what we can do at this point is we have identified that our radio actually has a reset button here on the faceplate. That's something that you probably wanna consider before you totally get it removed, but we're gonna talk about it here now in this video. On our radio, you may have a little teeny button here that you can press either with a little pin or some sort of axis that allows you to reset the unit back to factory to see if that fixes your unit. In our case, Kenwood, it's the little triangle. and other models, it could be down below. For Pioneers, it's a little pinhole that you push. It just really depends on the brand of radio. So for us, we're gonna go ahead and push that reset. You can hear it click in. I'm gonna just hold it for a second here. Okay, so we got the light to turn back on again. So the reset actually worked, but yet still not getting an image here on the screen. We can hear the fans on here in the back. So the, the unit is again, indeed powered up, but still not working. So unfortunately in this circumstance is scenario number three, the radio is bad. And at this point of time, we'll have to let the customer know that we'll have to look for a replacement, something that uh, will suit their needs. That's about it. I'm glad that we're able to identify our issue here. Unfortunately, it's gonna cost a little bit of money to fix as the radio is bad and it will need to be replaced. Hopefully in your circumstance, you'll have a better outcome, whether it be a blown fuse, a loose wire, or something of the sort there, that'll be inexpensive and quick for you to replace. That's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we will see you in the next video.